So I don't typically do a lot of like legal commentary videos, substantive legal commentary stuff. Most of my stuff is focused on um, like cross-examination skills. Um, but I saw this and I thought, ah, maybe we'll give this a try because um, I think it's important to sort of uh, debunk pseudo-legal stuff uh, just as it is to, to debunk pseudoscience. So um, I saw this on, uh, on YouTube uh, this morning and um, I'm just going to play you this, uh, this short uh, and then I'll give you some commentary. I figured it out that if you and a couple of your friends try to buy a plot of land out in the country and put some tiny houses on it, the government's going to stop you. They're going to say, no, this plot of land out in the middle of nowhere where you're minding your own business and no one can see you, this is zoned R1. You can only have one residential housing unit on this land. You and your friends can't all live here at once. And if you guys decide to go ahead and do it anyway, the county is going to fine all of the land owners equally. So you're going to pay 700, you're going to pay 700, you're going to pay 700. It's going to be an ass show. Well, let me tell you how to game this system. You and your friends don't go buy the land. You and your friends start a corporation. And then you have the corporation buy the land. And then you put your tiny houses on and do whatever you want because everything on the land now is private corporate business. And if the county tries to mess with you, they can't mess with you or your friends. They have to mess with the corporation. And that corporation is one entity with you and your friends behind it to fight back. If you're interested in solemnly swearing to be up to no good, follow me. So as an actual lawyer, I always have to be careful when I'm commenting on videos like this because um, although I am a lawyer, I am not your lawyer and I, I don't want to be seen as giving you legal advice, especially um, in situations where uh, it's out of my jurisdiction because, you know, I can't practice law in, I don't know, wherever you are. But that having been said, and I say this again strictly for educational and entertainment purposes and you should contact your own lawyer uh, you know in whatever jurisdiction you are in order to figure out the local laws but in general don't do that it's a super bad idea it's a super super bad idea like if you were in my jurisdiction it would be a super bad idea or a jurisdiction with similar laws which is probably going to be a lot of them and the reason for that is this Corporations are not magic, and this is not a new idea that this guy is coming up with. It is a super old idea, and people are very wise to it, and it doesn't do anything. It When you, okay, look, corporate law, 101, right? The reason you incorporate and put money in a corporation is so that you can limit your liability, right? So the idea is that you can only lose the amount of money that you put into the corporation. And that allows you to, you know, take some risks and pool your risks as investors. So if you and all your friends decided you want to do an investment of any kind, then, you know, and you don't want to, uh, you know, have your creditors get the ability to you know, actually take your personal house and, you know, sell your kids into slavery. That's hyperbole, but you know what I mean. Like, take everything that you have, then you take whatever money it is you want to invest, you put that in a corporation, and then the corporation is going to take the risks and incur the contracts. And if the corporation runs up debts that it can't pay, just the corporation goes bankrupt, you don't go bankrupt. So that's great. And that would work here to that extent. But what did the corporation just do? It took all the money that you guys pooled together and it bought some land. And now that land is an asset of the corporation, which means that the county for its fines, for your sins, can collect against the corporation. So that means that you are going to lose your land and all the tiny houses on it. That's all that's going to happen. That's all you've done is throw your money away in the same way that you would have if it was individuals because those fines are just going to pile up. The corporation is going to owe it and then the county is going to be able to collect all of these fines against one entity uh, and foreclose against its one asset. You've simplified things for them. Um, I see this all the time. and I, I've actually seen this in court. I remember one instance in particular where there was this guy and uh, he was like, oh, I found this clever loophole where, uh, you know, somebody was in like a foreclosure situation. And so uh, instead of um, letting the bank take the house, he just sold me the house for a dollar and now I own the house and I don't owe you any money. Ha ha ha. Um, and we didn't do this with lawyers. We didn't need lawyers or anything. And um, 
you know, aren't I clever? And the judge was like, no, um, you didn't do what you thought you did. What you did was you made his problem your problem. And now, since in this case you did this in your personal names, um, you owe the bank all of that money. In no, you know, notwithstanding that it is more than the land now is currently worth, because that land went down in value since the bank lent him money to buy it. I don't care that you only paid a dollar. You now owe the bank the full amount of, um, you know, of the mortgage. And the guy was like, "What? This is unfair." I want to report you to unfairjudges.com or something like that. And, you know, judge kind of was scribbling and he looked up and he was like, I don't care about that. Like, don't do stuff like this. You're not clever. It's not a good idea. Just, it is a better idea to just do it like the way that people normally do it. You're not going to get ahead but you're not going to get knocked behind. And like sometimes in very rare circumstances, you might get one over on somebody, but typically that somebody is not going to be the legal system itself because they are the ones that interpret the rules. And so if you have a clever fringe interpretation where you're like, ha ha, when you take it to the person who interprets the rules and try and insist on your weird interpretation that like screws over a large number of people or a small number of powerful people, the court's going to say that's not the interpretation and, and, and you can argue until you're blue in the face. It's not going to matter. You're not going to get what you thought you were going to get. You're going to get screwed over. You, you played your, like, congratulations, you played yourself. That's what's up.